morning. Happy New Year. My name is Marcus. If you don't know who I am, I'm the vicar here at Ascension. It's fantastic to be together on this glorious day. It's absolutely wonderful. And I want to start this morning with a New Year quiz question. What do you think is the correct date to take your Christmas tree and decorations down? I'm going to take, um, anyone, anyone want to shout something out? Anyone? Six? Six? You're such a well-educated bunch. Well done. Yes, it is the 6th of January, which is also the date of Epiphany. And in Western churches, Epiphany celebrates the visit of the Magi. And that word Magi we translate as wise men or wise people as they came to visit the baby Jesus. And today we are celebrating together Epiphany here at Ascension. And what I'd like us to focus on this morning is what can the Magi teach us this year? What can the Magi teach us this year? And there's at least four things that I believe the Magi can teach us from this passage. So if you've got the passage open, then keep it open because I'm going to be referring to it. And the first thing begins with M, M for Magi. And it's this, that the Magi were open to the miraculous. It says in verse 1, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. And then verse 9, it says, after they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. Verse 12, and having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Star, star dream. Miraculous. The Magi were open to the move of the miraculous. And had the Magi not been open to the miraculous, they would not have met Jesus. Let me repeat that again. Had the Magi not been open to the miraculous, they would not have met Jesus. Christmas time is celebration, as we know, of the birth of Jesus, technically called the Incarnation. I love that word, Incarnation. It it reminds me of God con carne. It's kind of not chili con carne, but God con carne. God surrounded by flesh. God becoming one of us in the person, in the baby of Jesus Christ. And C.S. Lewis, the famous author, says this. He says that the incarnation, God becoming one of us, is the central miracle of Christianity. The central miracle of Christianity. You've probably guessed I'm a vicar, that's what I do, and people often ask me questions, and they often sort of say to me, oh, you know, Marcus, how can you believe that Jesus really healed people? You know, how, th- those sort of miracles in the gospel, how can you really believe they happened? The resurrection, really? Stars guiding the magi across the sky, them hearing from God in a dream, really? And my answer is this. It's the incarnation, stupid. I don't obviously say the word stupid, just to be clear, because I'm much more polite than that. But it's the incarnation. If you believe in the central miracle of Christianity, which divides BC from AD, if you believe the claim that God became something he had never been without ceasing to be what he had always been, the word became flesh, the eternal God becoming man in Jesus. Once you have crossed the threshold of belief that the incarnation is true, Emmanuel, God with us, born as a baby, then the other miracles, quite frankly, are not worth debating. Because if God can come as a baby, then guiding the Magi with stars and dreams is chicken feed. Basic. 
You see, Christianity was birthed through the miraculous, God becoming a baby. Miracles were the lived experience of Jesus throughout the Gospels. He healed people. He healed people. He rose on from the dead. He turned water into wine. And the miraculous resurrection of the dead, of Jesus from the dead, is what we're going to be celebrating at Easter. Christianity is marinated in miracles. It's part of the DNA of our faith. And the problem with the purely materialistic worldview is that it, by definition, cuts itself off from the existence of miracles. Yet, it was the Magi's very openness to the miraculous that meant they encountered Jesus. And this morning... At the beginning of this new year, 2022, I feel led to say this, that if you want to encounter Jesus, and if I want to encounter Jesus this year, we need to open our hearts afresh to the miraculous. Yes, to the big miracles, but also to the everyday miracles of grace. To recognize that this faith that you live as a Christian encompasses the supernatural as well as the natural. And for some of us, maybe we have inadvertently jettisoned the expectation of the supernatural. Maybe we feel we prayed for something, it didn't happen, we feel let down. Or maybe our expectations have been squashed by metropolitan, secular London living, which we can't help but all inhabit day to day. But I believe at the beginning of this year, God wants to soften our hearts afresh, to open our hearts, and to challenge us to pray prayers for the miraculous with boldness and expectation. New Year's one of those times, isn't it, where you look back, well, I do anyway, I review what has been. And I look back over the eight years that I've been here as vicar, and if I look at some of the key moments, they all have within them the miraculous. I just want to share a few of them. Um, enjoying the warmth today, are we? Are we enjoying the nice warm 22 degrees that we're experiencing right now compared to the 4.5 degrees outside? Well, um, I just want to tell you that back in 2016, this was our heating system. That's right, it was held together by string and sellotape. And every Sunday, I want to tell you what got the most prayer. It wasn't anyone in here, it was that heating system. We would pray that it would heat us, and it would heat us warmly, and it broke. And the PCC in their wisdom, that's the trustees of the church, said, we don't have the money, but we're going to step out in faith. And we've been told that a new heating system would cost £100,000. And we stepped out, we didn't have the money, and eight weeks later, I received a letter from a solicitor Max was his name. Dear Reverend Gibbs, I'd like to let you know that someone you may not know who was previously in your congregation has left a legacy. How much was the legacy for? 100,000 pounds. I wept. And yet, God's in it. God, God knows our needs. God, God knows our needs. That big ticket item needed a big ticket result. And he moved. And I give thanks to Greta Hyde, who I never met, for that. Thank you, Greta, for leaving that. Let's look at another one on the screen. Um, if you just pop it up on the screen, that'd be great. Now, this is Frank. Could everyone say, hello, Frank? Hello, Frank. Frank was a lovely man from Drain Surgeon. If you ever need your drain sorting, talk to Drain Surgeon in Croydon. They're great. And we're now in the year of 2018. And we decided to launch a cafe. And the most important thing about a cafe is the toilet. The toilet has to be right. And we didn't have a toilet at the back of church, and we needed a toilet. And it had to go there, right there, at the back, so that when people came into the cafe, they could enjoy uh, the loo. And I said to Frank, Frank, you need to be able to plumb this loo into the drainage refuse system. 
And he said, Marcus, I've got something really bad to tell you. I said, what? He says, I've been um, a plumber for 30 years. You're not going to be able to do it because the refuse, the main drainage London sewer is about 100 yards away. And there is, there's no way that we'll be able to get the, the, the refuse from that area 100 yards down the road without digging up the road. And I said to him, dig. Dig, Frank. I'm going to pray. And he said, you can pray as much as you want, vicar, but it ain't going to happen. Anyway, Frank dug. And I had to disappear off for a meeting, and I disappeared off for this meeting, and he dug. And later that day, I, I came back, and Frank was just standing there shaking his head, and he looked at me, he said, you're going to make a believer out of me. You're going to make a believer out of me. I said, why? He, says, he said, for some reason, that is, I, I literally don't know why, there is a pipe that goes all the way from here all the way to the main drainage system. There is absolutely no reason why that should exist, but it does. And I just said, well, you know, it's God, isn't it? Walked off. Phew. Thank you, Jesus. Miracle. Our next uh, photo. Um, if we could just pop that up on the screen, that'd be great. So um, this is Letitia. Everyone say hi, Letitia. I'd never met Letitia before in my life. We were just coming out of COVID. This is now 2021. Yeah, last year. And um, it suddenly was the case that we actually were allowed to sing again. Do you remember for a while we weren't allowed to sing? We're now allowed to sing again. And um, the problem was we had no one to play the guitar or sing. And someone who was on the staff team said, come and say hi to my friend Letitia. I'd never met this lady before. Um, she was in the cafe, as you can see. I walked over to her. And um, I felt prompted to just say the following. You've got a worship leader for us, right? And totally unfazed, I'd never spoken a word to this lady in my life. She looked at me and she went, yes, shall I call him now? I said, yeah, that'd be great. She said, yeah, I'll give him a call and I'll, I'll just let you know in a moment what the situation is. And I walked off. That was literally the interaction. Anyway, I was up here, and she came over. She said, I've called him. Here is his number. Do you want to give him a call? I said, yeah, I'll call him now. But by the way, hello. How are you? Who are you? you know. And she told me a little bit about her and all the rest of it, and that was really nice. Anyway, I phoned this guy. He answers the phone with some kind of deep voice. And I say, are you Relu? He says, yes. I said, can you help us out with worship? Yes. Can you come on Thursday for a practice? Yes. Can you then play this Sunday? Yes. He turns up on Thursday, I think, oh no, I've just realized he could be shockingly bad. Um, and he played, and he played wonderfully. And uh, now we have Relu, who's been playing most Sundays. So come here, round of applause for Relu. So thank you, Relu. <laughs> Relu, you are a miracle. <laughs> you are a miracle. And then the final one, because I just, I just want to share some of these amazing things that happens when we, like the Magi, recognize that this, this life is a life of the miraculous, a life of the supernatural as well as the natural. The final one, which is one of my favorites, if we just put this up, this, this lady is um, uh, called Gassine. She works in the cafe, she's a volunteer, and she's holding some puppets. And the service before this one on a Sunday morning is called Bubble Church. And there's puppets involved, and she had recognized this. She helps in the cafe serving coffee. To be honest, I, I don't really know her that well. And um, she came over to Luke, and she said, would you like me to make costumes for your puppets? Now, that's quite a specific thing, isn't it? Would you like me to make... Luke gets chatting to her, and it turns out that back in France, before she came here to the UK, she was a professional puppet costume designer. Let's just get, let, let's just get that straight. Not, not just a costume designer, but a professional puppet costume designer for a TV program. And we said, yes, we'd love you uh, to make uh, clothes for our puppets. And so 
um, for our Christmas productions, our puppets had an entirely new wardrobe, which we very much enjoyed. And I'm just thinking, Lord, I couldn't, I couldn't have organized that. That's ridiculous. So can we give Gersine a round of applause as well? So thank you, uh, Gersine. Our faith involves miracles. Let's not calculate without God this year. Let's not calculate without him. So the M is for miracles. The next three are a little bit swifter. The, the A of Magi is for all people. It says this, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east. Right from the outset, this faith that we practice today was for all people. The Magi were from the east. They weren't Jewish. And our faith, friends, is for people from the north, south, east, and west. It is for all people. And Epiphany traditionally celebrates the fact that this is non-Jewish people, the Gentiles, coming to baby Jesus, the Magi. And if you're a bit of a Bible geek, Matthew is the gospel that we're reading from today. He is the only gospel that talks about Magi from the East. In other words, he's saying this good news of Jesus is for all people. And how does Matthew finish his gospel in chapter 28, verse 19? He says, therefore, go and make disciples of what? All people, all nations. It's as if Matthew is bookending who this is for, who this Jesus is for. Right at the beginning with the Magi, right at the end with the command of Jesus, he's saying it is for every single person. And you've got to understand how weird it would have been for Jews to have thought that the, the king of the Jews, Jesus, was even for these Magi from the East. They didn't study the Torah. They didn't have the Old Testament. They lived far away. They were essentially, to be honest, astrologers, magicians who believed in the stars. They were what we call nowadays New Ages. Yet God spoke to them in a language they understood. We run something called the Alpha Course here at uh, Ascension. You may have heard of it. It's been going for years. It's an opportunity to find out more about the Christian faith. And for years, I spent a lot of time trying to work out who to, um, I love that, there's even a little, I didn't even know there was an advert, is there an advert for it? There you go, advert coming up. So Alpha Course, it's kicking off in a few weeks' time. That's great, we'll come back to that later. Um, I spent a lot of time thinking, who should I invite? Who's going to be open to maybe meeting Jesus? And um, when I was working, um, uh, when I first moved to London, I, I kind of think, oh, I remember this lady called Lynn, who I worked with, she was very cool, and I just thought, she, you know, she's not going to be into this sort of Jesus stuff. I won't invite her. But there was this other guy uh, whose name, I kid you not, was Adonis. Um, I think that's like the god of love or something. He, he had no issues with self-confidence. And um, he, was, he was a great guy, and I invited him. I thought Adonis will be open to coming on the Alpha course. I turned up on week one. Adonis had come, and Adonis had brought Lynn. I didn't invite Lynn, he brought Lynn. Two weeks later, Adonis stopped coming to the Alpha course. Lynn did the whole course and met Jesus on that course. And I'd ruled her out. I thought, no, no, it's not for Lynn, it's for Adonis. Last year, no, the year before, we had um, a fair in here. A, I think it was a Christmas fair, it was. And one of the stalls... I went up to her, I looked up, it was Lynn from 20 years ago. And she says, I'm still a Christian, I'm still going to church, I'm still following Jesus. Good on Adonis for inviting Lynn, hey? Because I hadn't. And I want to say to you this, this year, I think the Magi are saying to us, not only is this a miraculous, the M for a miraculous, but friends, you might have written people off, you might have pigeonholed who this is for, this Christian faith thing. And Jesus is saying to you this morning, it's, it's for the people you don't even think it's for. It's for those who you might have written off. And therefore, my invitation would be what I do now, because I've learned. I talk about Jesus to anyone, anyone and everyone. I put no filter in the way. And I am astounded. It's never people I think it will be. 
It's, it's so often people hear his calling just like he called the Magi from the East. So the M is let's learn from the Magi and be open to the miraculous. The A is that it's for all people. The G of Magi is that they brought gifts. They brought gifts. It says in verse 11, on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. For the Magi to follow Jesus, it cost them. It cost them the most precious gifts, gold. It cost them their time, their energy. They traveled miles from the east. It cost them basically their best. They gave their best. But actually, they gave even more than gifts. They gave their hearts in worship. Verse 11, on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And they did this because they recognized who Jesus was. It says here, the Magi said, where is the one who has been born king? We saw his star when it rose, and we've come to worship him. God doesn't need our gifts, he's God. But when we give him our best, we're basically saying, you, God, are my treasure. Not, not these other things, you, God, are my treasure. That's what we're saying. It's saying, Jesus, you're worth the cost because you're so precious. And again, at the beginning of this new year, I want to say to you, as I'm saying to myself, I believe we are being called also today to, I was trying to find a word for it, but the word I came to was this, to re-consecrate our whole selves to Jesus this morning, to, to sort of say, I'm giving you all of me at the beginning of this year. I've been reading the papers over the last few weeks, and they're all about how you can be a better self this 2022, how you can get fit, how you can uh, increase your brain power, how you can achieve everything you want to achieve. I mean, the amount of articles on self-actualization are incredible. And actually, I believe the best thing we can do is this. We can say, it's not actually about what God can do for me, but... It's about what I can do for God this year. How can I even better serve him this year? It flips it totally on his head. Instead of God and everything else orbiting us as the center of the universe, it's a bit like we're saying, you, you are, you're the center. I orbit around you. You're the center, Jesus. And I'm going to re-consecrate my life to you. The famous passage in Romans 12, St. Paul says this. So here's what I want you to do. With God helping you, by the way, take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. How does that look this new year for you? How are you going to give yourself to Jesus in terms of your time, your talents, your treasure? There is no better thing you can do. It's ironic. Jesus talks about it all the time. If you want to gain life, what do you have to do? You have to lose it. If a seed's going to grow and grow, what do you have to do? The seed has to die. And this is what we're called to. And, and the mage, I knew this. They gave themselves, they worshipped, they brought their gifts. And that's what we do when we love, when we love Jesus. Love always involves cost, whoever we love. It always involves a cost. True love involves a cost. But the eye of Magi is fantastic because it tells us that this love for Jesus, this reconsecrating ourselves, is not an unrequited Love, because the eye of Magi is for inspiration. Who would like to be inspired this year apart from me? Yeah, most of us, I think. It says this in verse 10. 
When the Magi saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. This is the English Standard Version of um, this verse, verse 10. When they saw the star, the Magi, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. I mean, how much joy can there be? They didn't just rejoice. They rejoiced exceedingly, not just with joy, but with great joy. This is a quadruple way of saying that the Magi experienced joy when they came across the Christ child. And I believe this was what might, we might call a Holy Spirit moment, where they received the joy of Jesus. Yes, they gave their gifts. Yes, they bowed down in worship, but they experienced the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And when you look at the etymology of the word inspiration, it's originally a theological term that's at the heart of inspiration is spirit. That the true inspiration is the inspiration of the living God. And I believe this year, if you're anything like me, we need to start with a bit of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Him breathing his breath of life into us. You may have heard the old story about an old couple who argued all the time. Um, they, they were getting on a bit, and they'd argued throughout their whole married life. They had argued um, the day they got married, they argued. They argued on their honeymoon. They argued every year of their life. They argued and argued and argued. And they reached their 50th wedding anniversary, and um, their children, who are quite grown up by now, decided that what they'd do is um, buy uh, their parents um, as a present for their 50th an all-expenses-paid all trip to a top psychiatrist. And they argued, this couple, about whether they should go. They argued on the way there. They argued as they walked into his office. They argued as they sat down. They argued as they worked out whose turn it was to speak first. And the psychiatrist said, stop! And he walked around his desk. He went up to the little old lady. And he hugged her tightly and pressed his lips to hers and kissed her passionately for over 10 seconds. He then walked round behind his desk and he said to the man, this is what this lady needs three times a week. The old man said, okay, doc, I'll bring her in Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. <laughs> and the moral of the story is we need to feel the love of God. I need to feel the love of God. The Magi rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, quadruple dollop of joy. And I believe that part of coming to church is, and we can do this, of course, on our own, but part of it is we come here to experience and receive the love of the living God. And so I'd like to invite the band up, and I'd like us to have um, five or ten minutes where we allow ourselves, we give ourselves permission to be loved afresh by God. If you're here this morning for the first time and you're thinking, well, wait a moment, wait a moment, this sounded good up to this bit, what's going to happen now? Um, about eight minutes of singing and allowing ourselves to receive the love of God together, to receive the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so I'd like to uh, pray for us, and I'd love us to stand together, and uh, we're going to start with some music. God often uses music as a way of speaking this love into our hearts, and um, we're going to have an opportunity to re-consecrate ourselves to the Lord this morning. Father God, we thank you for the Magi. And Lord, where we have become cynical, skeptical, I pray that you would release our hearts and soften our hearts and open our hearts to the miraculous this year. Thank you that it was because of the miraculous and openness to the miraculous that the Magi got to be with you. Thank you that this is for all people. 
It's for every single person here. And maybe this morning you're thinking, is it really for me? Is this love really for me? And the major I say, yeah, it's for you. We were from the east. It doesn't matter where you're from. This is for you this morning. And we reconsecrate. We bring our lives to Jesus this morning. And come now, Holy Spirit, and fill us. We pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stay open now. And um, sometimes what we just say is as a way of saying, Jesus, I'm open to you this morning. I'm open to these things. Just putting your hands like this is a way of just symbolizing. It's, it's not magic. It's just a way of going, I'm open to you. I'm willing to just open my hands to receive your gift in me today. So let's have a time of worship and of encounter.